Here it says 10.2, determining the end behavior of the graph of a polynomial function. Choose the end behavior of each polynomial function. Okay, this has to do with the leading coefficient. So in order for me to figure out how it's going to behave, I need to know the leading coefficient, okay? And the leading coefficient, I'm gonna write these notes up here. So the leading coefficient is the term, or the leading, I shouldn't say leading coefficient, the leading term is the term with the highest exponent of the variable. So in all of our problems, we're always using x. So you basically just want to identify the term that has the highest exponent on x, and that would be this term, sign included, okay? For part b, the guy with the highest exponent would be this term, and then for this one, it's hard to tell. You would have to multiply it out, or I can show you a fast way to do it just to get the highest one, okay? All you do is take what's in the front and multiply it by the first term here, because this guy has a higher exponent than this guy. Then take that result and multiply it to here. So I don't wanna draw an arrow like that because then it looks like you're distributing. So then I would multiply these two, I get negative four x squared, and then I would take that and multiply it by the third one to get um, negative four x cubed. This is the leading term for this. I don't have to multiply it all out. And I promise you, if I put a five power up there and a seven power up here, you are not gonna want to try to multiply that out, right? So you need to know the quick technique on how to do that. If there is a power there, then instead of multiplying by x, you would be multiplying by x to whatever that power is up there. So if there was a square here, it would be negative four x times x squared. And then if there was a cube there, it'd be that result times x to the third, okay? And that's how you would get your leading coefficient. Now, what about these leading terms do I need to know? This is what you need to know. So if it's a positive in the front and an even exponent, it's gonna kind of look like parabola opening upward on both sides, okay? There might be something happening in the middle. We don't know what's happening in the middle, okay? But we know it's gonna go up on both sides. In the computer, the way they say that is that they say rises to the left and rises to the right, right? Because it's going up on the left and then it's going up on the right, okay? Now, if it's a negative coefficient, but still an even power, what it's gonna do is it's gonna look like a parabola going down. Again, I don't know what's happening in the middle. All we know is what's happening in the ends. And this, the way they say it, is it falls to the left and falls to the right. Because on the left side it's going down and on the right side it's going down, okay? Now, what if I have a positive x to the odd exponent? That will kind of look like a cube where it looks like this, but I don't know what's happening here in the middle, okay? So on this one, it actually falls to the left and rises to the right. So notice how it looks like it's going down on the left, but it looks like it's going up on the right. And then the last possibility is a negative coefficient, but x to the odd. It just is the reverse of the positive. Again, we don't know what's happening in the middle. All we know is that to the left, it rises. And we know that to the right, it falls. Okay. So then we're going to look over here and we're going to ask ourselves that question. 
Well, notice that this is a negative x to the odd exponent. So what does that mean? That means that the in behavior of that guy is going to look like this. And so what do I say? I say that it rises to the left because it's going up on the left and falls to the right. Okay, that is the answer for this particular problem. Although they're gonna give you different problems and you're gonna have to answer all of them. So here, this one is actually a positive coefficient, but it is still an odd exponent. What kind of in behavior is that gonna have? It's gonna have this in behavior, which in words, falls to the left and rises to the right. Okay, because it's going down on the left and up on the right. And it's a drop down arrow, so you'll be selecting these statements from all the others. So basically, all of the, the all four of these statements will show up in the drop down arrow, and you have to pick the one that applies. You won't see this. All you'll see is the words. Okay, but I want you to be aware of the images because when we graph them, you'll know that that's what it's supposed to look like visually, as well as I believe on the final exam they may have these symbols in there. So that's a reason why you definitely want to get used to those symbols and then this is where those symbols and where this conclusions are coming from okay so for the last one I do have a negative coefficient in the front but I also have an odd exponent so it is the same situation it's coincidence I didn't get any even exponents um, it's possible that you could okay um, so then this one is actually going to be up on the left and down on the right so then the statement is just like it was up there it rises to the left and falls to the right okay let's just do I'm gonna make up one D what if I had um, K of X equal to negative 4 X squared times X minus 2 squared times x plus 3, something like that. Okay. How do I work that out? Remember, you take the variable part and you actually have to take the whole coefficient as well. So take the whole coefficient and multiply it by what? This is an x squared. So you're taking negative 4x squared and you're multiplying it by x squared. And this is a 1 power, so you're going to multiply it by x to the 1 power. And when I multiply all of those together, I get negative 4x to the this is how the polynomial is going to behave. It's, oh, I did it again. Let me do, um, let me just do a square here. So it'd be x squared as well. And so then when I'm done, I'm gonna get x to the sixth. And that's an even, but it's a negative x to the even, which means it should be going downward like this. So in words, it's gonna fall to the left and fall to the right. And those would be the words that you select in the drop down arrow for that problem, okay? So it's the whole monomial in the front times x to whatever power is up here times x to whatever power is up there.